Welcome to Money Talks with me, Gerald, Mr. G. Mwandiambira. This is the show that addresses conversations about day-to-day -day money matters that we sometimes ignore or simply don't know enough about to discuss. Today we'll be talking the ABCs of investing. The word invest is probably one of the most used financial terms. However, few of us have really thought about what it means. And to help us unpack this question and other questions, we have guests in studio today. Gugu Siziba, who's a financial planner at Sugar Creek Wealth, and Pretty Piri, a mother who's interested in being an investor. Welcome, ladies. Thank you, Thank you for having us. So, we're talking the magic word, investment. Everywhere, investment, investment, investment. Let's start with you, the professional. Google, what is an investment? Well, the easier way I can put an investment, I would say, is the purchase of an asset or an item for the purpose of generating your income or for capital appreciation. Okay, P Pretty, did you understand any of that? Well, though it's a bit <laughs> too technical, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> okay, so she was a bit technical. So in, in essence, an investment is anything that you can invest in. So a okay. vest, so when you vest in, you're putting money in, and when you vest out, you're getting money out. So that's yeah. in essence is an investment. From what you've heard, Pretty, what's an investment? What do people say an investment is? Is it what we are saying that you're putting money in so that you can invest it out? Or people say many things. Uh, I think um, it's not really what she say. You know, what we have, have, have taken investment to be is not really what it is. Mm -hmm. You know, um, there's a lot of this get rich quick money schemes that are happening around and we think it's investments. Okay. That's what we think, okay, so right? And we put our money in there. Mm -hmm. we, 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 we think we're going to get something back, and we don't. Okay, so, so, so you've had that experience. Now, she's saying that, you know, generally people have different opinions of what an investment is. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to basics and ask Google, can anyone invest? Is everything that moves able to invest? What, what, who can invest? What's the criteria? You see, with investments, they're not restricted maybe to a certain group of people or um, the elite and everything like that. Investments is for everyone. You can start even small, and what you'll realize is investments and savings, they go hand in hand. For you to have that mindset of actually investing, you need to be able to save. So you can start saving the small amounts. You have, have a piggy bank, have mm -hmm. a cookie jar mm -hmm. where you're storing your money, and that's how you get to the investments. It's for everyone. It's broad. It's for everyone. It doesn't restrict people to the rich and famous, and that's the problem with everyone. We all think that investing comes to the elite group. Those are the ones that have to do with okay, this investment. So, so let's it's unpack it because okay. you're saying that anybody can invest. What's the, what's the smallest amount I can call myself to invest? Like I, what I was saying that because investments and savings go hand in hand, mm -hmm. you might, most of the investments product, they might give you a money limit to it, but that doesn't mean that you are limited to that okay, amount. So what's the minimum? 100 rand, 200 rand, most 300 the, rand? Most of the uh, investment uh, products, they'll tell you 500 rand. 500 that's, rand, yeah. that's a lot, that's a lot Wh of money. Which is a lot of money. Hence, I come back to the point that don't be limited to, this mm -hmm. to these investment houses. Do your own thing. Start having your own in, uh, investments. Have your savings jar. Put in 100 rands per month. In a year, that's what? That's 12,000 at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of money. Then okay. you then diversify and, f and venture into the bigger things. Okay, so now, now Pretty, you, you're a parent. Um, have you started investing for your little ones? And if you have... Do you see value in it? Uh, so far, no, I haven't. I, 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 I think I'm still looking for that person. That person is going to sit down with me and really educate me on what an investment is. Right? Hint, hint. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I don't know. Again, I think you need to be making a decent amount of money to be able to invest, right? Mm. Let's just say, for instance, I'm earning 2,000 bucks mm. per month, and I really, really want to invest. Where do I start? Mm. And I think, again, before you start, again, you're going to have to explain to her what you can invest in with 2,000 a month. Let's start at the beginning. People also talk about investment with the word risk. Um, what is a risk, Google? What, what does that mean? Um, literally, a risk is the probability of a loss an injury that happens as a result of their external and internal vulnerabilities. So it's, it's what 
we, where we are. As You've done your thing again. You've yes, gone I've, I've realized that I've just term. used <laughs> this bit okay. of technical. So it's a risk of <laughs> a risk, you losing something. A risk pretty is how much are you prepared to lose? Because okay. with any investment, that is risk. How yeah. much am I prepared to lose? Yeah. The more you're prepared to lose, i.e. all the money, it means that you can invest in a riskier thing. Okay. Or the less you're prepared to risk to lose is the lower the risk. Mm -hmm. how, do, how do you find out how risky a person is, um, Google? How do I find out how the risky a person is? We literally mm. have to carry out. We have we, uh, what I do is a risk. I do risk profiling. Okay. So I sit down with you. We go through questions, general questions. But the way you answer those questions, they tell me where you are as a person. Okay. Are you risk averse, or are you actually a very risky person, or are you an aggressive person when it comes to risk? Yeah. From there. I then see where so to all of us have person. risk. All of us have risk. Okay. Every day when we walk out of our houses, it's a risk. We have the risk of being killed, but we still go somewhere. Okay. We have the risk of not seeing our families, but we still go somewhere. Killed, but anyway, it's, it's possible. <laughs> it's not anyway. We have and the and risk of not coming back home, okay. but we still go out. So every time so you invest, there's a risk that the money might not all come back. There is. A so risk. what's the difference? Am I not gambling? Should I not just go to the casino and pull the handle? When it comes to investments. Mm. It's what usually makes investments and gambling different mm -hmm. is the time horizon. Okay. With gambling, you're going there, you're doing whatever you do. Once you make your loss, that's it. Okay, so it's you, instant. You can't come, it's instant. You okay. can't come back and say, no, this is a loss. No, that's it, mm -hmm. that's it. With an investment, we do it over time. We tie you down maybe five years. We put you in a five-year scheme. So maybe today your money is losing value, but that's not guaranteed it's going to stay low. Tomorrow mm -hmm. it's going to, you're going to get a better interest in something like that. So that then varies between the gambling and the investment part okay. of things. So another thing, pretty, if you to understand investments again is, she spoke at the beginning about long words, capital appreciation mm -hmm. and income. Every investment in the world has one of the two or both. Mm -hmm. Capital appreciation, meaning that it grows in value, and income, meaning that it can give you cash flows. Mm -hmm. So when you look at any investment, always look at it from the point of view, does it have give me capital appreciation mm -hmm in terms of is it growing in value or does it give me income? Now, we we'll obviously unpack that a little bit more, mm -hmm. but back to you, Google, let's just ask, who is ready to invest? So if you said that somebody who invests has a risk profile, um, who, who can invest? Who would you discourage from investment? I wouldn't discourage anyone from investing. It's very important that mm. you do invest for you, you don't for future and certain events in life. So it's very important that we all invest. But what if I have a very risk averse attitude? I don't want to lose money. Should I be investing? Then it comes back to the risk profiling mm -hmm. where we put you in funds where there is no, the, the risk is not too much. Mm -hmm. So you are balanced in a way. You're not, make, you're not going to make that much of a loss. Okay. And you're also not getting that much of an interest. You're different to someone who is aggressive. Okay. So at the end of the day, we all need to, uh, to, to invest, but depending on the risk profile that you are as a person. Pretty, you were speaking earlier on that you've tried investing or you've heard of people putting money somewhere. Who are these people you invested with? Who do you <laughs> invest your money with? Well, well, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this. <laughs> no, but... say it, say it. <laughs> Who did you give your okay. money to? So, so there was a time when um, a friend of mine told me about Bitcoin. I'm gonna say Bitcoin. Okay, Bitcoin. So they, this friend of mine just quit a job. She had a nice flashy car. Her kids started going to this fancy schools. And I asked her, how do you do it? She was like, Bitcoin girl. I was like, I want it, you know? So um, she recruited me. <laughs> I invested so something you were recruited. like. I was recruited. Okay. So yeah. I wanted that fancy car as mm. well. Mm -hmm. You know, I was. You know, Uhala in Zulu. Mm, mm, mm. So I invested 20 grand. 20,000 rand. 20,000 okay. grand. So where's the money now? And I was told that it would grow within a month. Mm. I would get all the returns like mm, this, mm. right? And surprisingly, until today, I haven't seen much, okay, so honestly. We, so so, so Pretty's had that experience. She put 20,000, which is a lot, which means she's got a big risk appetite. <laughs> Um, who should she have invested in? Uh, why did this happen? Um, probably because pretty you didn't have enough knowledge about what Bitcoin mm -hmm. is so, actually. So who, who's, who's, who is qualified to take people's money? 
always qualified to take people's money. Mm. Let me actually not classify it, because investments come in different forms, Mr. Okay. G. Um, Pretty, you went on and tried Bitcoin. Yeah. Had you even considered to invest in livestock with that 20,000? Could you, could, you could have bought chickens, right? Yeah. And they were going to give you eggs, right? Yeah. You were going to sell the eggs, you are going to get I income, know, right? and you were going to keep generating yeah, income. Yeah, but you need to check with anyone you put money in that they are registered w as an entity to accept um, money. your money. And also the FSCA website will also sh tell you what kind of advice or investments that person is authorized in. Okay. So essentially that's for classic investments where you know they, they are structured, people know what's going on. Rule number one, always check are they authorized FSP as as um, Google has said, and also are they registered with the FSCA? How do so I check, by the way? How do you check? Normally, if you look at the adverts, even on a bank's advert, mm -hmm. normally says at the bottom, authorized FSP. FSP Insurance okay. companies, advisors, they should have that, and then you can look them up on that website. If so, I can also ask you, mm -hmm. Mr. G, we have, like what you said, it's Bitcoin. Um, people are using it. Other people, it's working for them. But however, you are not going to find it under the uh, FSP service providers. But for others, it's working. It didn't work for you, but for others, apparently, it's working. Mm -hmm. So how then, again, do you go around that? So I think it's about information on investments. And I think we will have to unpack in terms of where we get the information on what we want to invest our money in mm. so that we can get it out in the future and get my, a return from our investment. So that, those are the words. You vest in so that you can get okay. money out, Just vest out, out. Yeah. and when it comes back, it's returning. And that's what they call a return. Okay. But we'll be discussing that. Join us after the break as we continue our conversation on investments. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Money Talks with me, Gerald, Mr. G. Mwantiambira. Today we're talking the ABCs of investing and investments. And in studio I have Gugu Siziba, who's a financial planner at Sugar Creek Wealth, and Pretty Piri, who's a mother and someone who's interested in investing. Now, before we broke for the break, we were talking about information on saving, or rather investing. Where do we get information on investing, Gugu? Um, when it comes to investing, you'll find information on the internet. You mm -hmm. just go on the internet, you put in what you want to look for, and you'll find it. You need to read as well. You'll find newspapers, read your newspapers, um, uh, go on different company websites and read up on the different investment mm -hmm. options they have. You can also, TV and radio, media, they also have these uh, advertisements on uh, investments. So that's literally where you can find all the information okay, you need. Okay, but, but this is like information in general. If I really wanted to maybe go for education where would i who can teach me about investing because i think there's a lot of information and if i don't really understand how to do work with it is there a way of getting educated on investments are yeah, there people right. who do it like i was saying that usually if you go on a website for a company mm -hmm. they can direct you to an advisor okay. that you are going to sit down with and they're going to explain in depth okay. exactly if you're looking for education they'll explain to you in depth what so you do plan. some education yes. in your role? Yes. So you'd educate someone like Pretty. Yes, I would. Pretty, have you ever had met an advisor who's actually or a planner who sat down with you and explained investing? Not really, no. Mm. Because I've always seen it as something that's like, you know, beyond my reach. <laughs> I feel like it's expensive. I don't know if maybe there's an, a fee but for it. How can it, it be expensive, Pretty? You spent 20000 on Bitcoin, which never came back. I know, right? Mm -hmm. It's just so, at times. So, how much you are you willing to spend for education on investing? How much is the real amount? Well, I would need uh, someone like Google to tell me that. <laughs> do, do, <laughs> you you? do you charge for your investor education normally? Normally, no. Okay, so it's it's actually free. It's actually free. Yeah. Okay, so the education you can get for free, but what are some of the most common investments which most people are looking at? Um, you will realize that most people are looking at unit trusts, mm -hmm. right? And others are also looking at shares. What's a unit trust? A unit trust is an investment in a collectible investment in a collective investment scheme, right? Okay, so so what's you a literally purchase mm -hmm. a unit, and in that unit, it holds a certain amount of shares of an asset from okay. the collective investment. So that's a unit. So who trust. is the collective? The collective now depends. It's a Product house. Okay, right. so what's a product house? No, we need to unpack it because <laughs> we're on money talks here and we want to keep, keep it simple. <laughs> also, it's now. What's a product house? 
as the different FSPs, remember we mentioned FSPs earlier on, uh -huh. financial services pro providers. Mm -hmm. So they are the different product houses. Okay. Yes. So definitely, so they are the ones who sell these units. Yes. And who else buys units? So is it me on my own or am I with other people? You can buy a unit mm -hmm. from there. Pretty can buy a unit. I can buy a unit. Okay. We can, everyone can do it. So that's yes. the collective. Yes. That's okay, the collective so that's a unit trust. Yes. What other common type of investment do we hear about a lot? You spoke about a share. What is a share? A share is literally a purchase of a share mm -hmm. in a company. So you're buying ownership of, a, uh, of that company. What? That is so I can the own the company? You can own a company. So which companies can I own and where would I find out where to get these shares? What you need to do, you know, you go on the stock market exchange, okay. right? So there are public traded companies on the stock market exchange. Okay. They all have the prices, what, how much a share is, and okay. you go and purchase a share. So it's different companies. You find all the, most of the big companies, okay. they're actually trading on the stock exchange. Okay, yes. so, so you can buy a share. Have you heard about this, Pretty? Um, do you know anyone who yes. owns a share? I think yes, because the time uh, that I was recruited into Bitcoin, I was told that I'm buying a share. Okay. There is pool one, pool two, and pool three. So apparently it's a share. So in my mind, I'm thinking, oh yeah, so I'm owning a share somewhere in Bitcoin, okay. <laughs> one of the shareholders. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think all of this goes back to uh, being uh, educated about these things, mm -hmm. knowing really what you're getting yourself into mm -hmm. uh, before, you know, opening your wallet and... And handing okay. over the money. Yeah. Okay. Rule num another rule perhaps which we should unpack is that should you be recruited to buy? Do people get recruited to buy anything? No. That okay. should be a red flag. <laughs> okay. Okay. So that's a red flag yeah. because when you're normally recruited into anything, it, it talks network pyramids mm. Mm. and ponzi's. Mm. Mm. Yeah. You, investing is something you do of your free will, and when you want your money back, you get it back freely. So we've spoken about classic investments. Classic investments being they're on a stock exchange mm. or it's, it's a product house, mm. or sometimes you're dealing with a bank or an insurance company. Are there any other things you can put money in, invest out, and make a capital appreciation and income, Google? Yes, that's where I think earlier on I mentioned mm. something about chickens, alternative investments, right? Mm -hmm. So this is investing, but it's not the traditional way we're used to, the going to purchase shares, bonds, and mm -hmm. it, all those things. It's another way of investing that's going to generate income, which is not so traditional to what mm -hmm. we're used to. So yes. give me an example like what? Livestock investments. So a livestock investment, uh, capital appreciation, where is it? Let's take for instance, you buy yourself cows, mm -hmm. right? Capital appreciation is going to be you selling that cow to other people, okay. right? Income generation, that cow is going to give you milk. Okay. What are you going to do? You're going to sell the milk to different shops and you're going to get income. Okay, right? wow. So, so, so all livestock can do that? Yes. And we don't have to stick to this traditional way of buying bonds mm. and mm. everything like that. Let's do something that we are used to. We grew up with our grandparents having livestock. We can actually go and try that. We don't have to stick to what so, we are told that um, this is... For me, I stay in, 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 in a flat and I want to do livestock. Why do I do? I really want to buy cows. Yeah. I like it's a good idea. Like, yeah. yeah. What yeah. then do I do? I'm not saying buy a cow and put it in your flat <laughs> and, keep it, and keep it in your flat. What you wait for it to Yeah, do it. but okay. no. Uh, usually, like what I'm saying, we as a financial advisor, I probably know where we can start this mm. um, investment for you. Mm -hmm. There are people who are already in that business. Yeah. So you come to me, we get you linked to that person. Okay. You, do, you buy your cows, you okay. buy your kettle. Everything is done there at mm. the farms, not in All your right. flat. Uh, okay. So don't worry about okay. that. Okay. Okay. Not so so what Google is saying is that if you speak to a financial advisor, most advisors are able to think beyond the traditional investments. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay. So you spoke of one alternative investment, livestock. What's another alternative investment you can maybe look at? We can also look at property. I put property, but property is not really um, alternative because it's already part of it. Mm -hmm. But it's also a way of you can invest. You can buy property for the sake of renting it out. Mm -hmm. And what mm -hmm. are you going to do? You're going to get income from can the rentals. Can I do um, a back room? You can do back rooms okay. in your, in your mm. compound. You can build back rooms. People are going to rent them out. What are you going to do? Okay. You're going to get income. If you decide to sell that property, it's capital appreciation. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. That's Makes something sense. that we can do. And so, another thing. So property is good in that it's income and capital appreciation. And capital. So you get two types. So there's the traditional property through a bank mm. or through a unit trust. Okay. And then the alternative investing type of properties where you build the back, the back rooms, rooms you're talking about, okay. or you buy a property for renovation and you sell it. Okay. Another alternative investment, Google. Another alternative one, I would think, 
Kruger Rands. Mm -hmm. Right. Kruger Rand? Yeah. What's that? Kruger Rands. Okay. <laughs> it's like the gold coins that mm -hmm. they usually sell. So you can buy that. And those ones usually perform even in bad uh, economic conditions. So you can get your Kruger Rands, you can keep them, right? Where do I buy those? I've never heard buy of them. Okay. Oh, is it? So a Kruger Rand has value? Yes, it does. Okay, how do a I know it's a real Kruger Rand? Because <laughs> I think the I'm best already <laughs> concerned because... <laughs> You can make your own at home. If you buy from me, it might be fake. <laughs> but go to the bank, you probably get okay. original, genuine ones. So right? coins have yeah. value it's and certain coin. types it's, of coins. Yeah, not every it's coin. not every coin. It's not so, that five-rand coin. So, uh, okay, not that by five-rand <laughs> coin. I was about to go there. Now, so you're the financial planner. You're the expert. Now, in terms of investing, let's go through some numbers. Um, I think I'd, I'd given you a few examples to say, look, if I invested this amount of money, how much would I have in a certain period? So that, because the one thing which is hard for a lot of people is to visualize how much return mm. they can get mm. by putting in so that they can invest out. Yeah, that's true. 100 Rand invested for 10 years. How much can I possibly get? If we look at 100 rands invested for 10 years, and I'm going to assume that it's going to be compound interest mm -hmm. of 10% mm -hmm. every month, you're likely to get 20,000 after 10 years. 10 years, yeah. 20,000 from yeah. 100 rand a month. Yeah. Not bad, Aish, not enough. 500 <laughs> rand. 500 rand, still the same scenario, 10 years uh, interest at 10%, mm -hmm. you are likely going to get 103,000. 103,000, I am getting warm, getting warm. <laughs> now, let's look at um, the maximum I could put into a tax-free savings account monthly, mm. 2,750 rand. Let's try that. 2,750, uh, you are likely to get about 508,000. That's what I like. So, <laughs> okay. so, so, so now, pretty, your 20,000 could have gone a long <laughs> yeah, way. Yeah, I, I think I must go and get it back. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so what have you learned, you know, pretty, in terms of, if you had to give advice to our viewers out there, about your experience in, in investing, and now that you know a little bit more, what would you say to someone who's out there? Um, I would say get as much information as possible. Do not just go into something because you've heard Google say it, it works. Mm -hmm. What works for Google might not work for you. Mm -hmm. Rather, go out there, read as much as possible, mm -hmm. watch the news, Unless, of course, if, if, if maybe you stay in the rural areas mm -hmm. where there is no TV, mm -hmm. there is no access to the internet, mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe, I don't know how, how mm -hmm. you do it, mm -hmm. but just get as much information, information. as possible before, so, yeah. So your basic uh, takeout is information, information, information. Yeah. Before we close off, Google, what if I have a problem with you or another financial planner? Where do I go? Uh, is there a place I can report these things so that I can also try and get my money back? Yeah. That's if it's a real. If it's a real. <laughs> <laughs> investment. Okay. So what happens if you have a problem with me or any other financial advisor? We've got what we call the phase ombud. So you can take your issues there. But before you even go mm -hmm. there, try sit down. Try have a resolution with your financial advisor. They've disappeared. They've gone. They've disappeared. Oh, they've no. gone. You're not answering and, the phone. Oh. <laughs> and your investment is also not <laughs> yeah. showing. You're yeah. getting nothing. Then you take up your case with the phase ombud. They're going to help you, right, with everything that you need in, okay. in line with your investment. So essentially, like what we're talking about, you, you're talking that if there's a problem, phase ombudsman, or I can go to the FSCA who registers these yes, advisors. Yes. Most of these investments are not registered. So we touched a little bit on a pyramid scheme. What are the quick pointers in terms of spotting a pyramid scheme so that at least our viewers can also know how to know the things to look out for? I think one thing is if, it's, if it sounds too good to be true, it's probably just not right at all. Okay. Yeah. Um, investments are long term. Uh, okay. so it's, you are not going to put 100 rands today and you expect that tomorrow it's going to be 10,000. Okay. It's not going to happen what like else? that. Like what Pretty said, recruiting. Uh -huh. You don't get recruited to invest. Uh, okay. mm. It's something that you do by yourself. So if you see this thing, there are red flags, you should actually note that no, um, mm -hmm. someone is taking me the wrong way. Okay. Yeah. So your quick pointers on a Ponzi or a pyramid scheme is recruitment doesn't work. You don't get recruited to invest your money. Mm -hmm. Too good to be true, i.e. miraculous money which comes mm. from nowhere, or you're getting 
your money too quickly yeah. because yeah. when you put money in in order to vest it out normally there's a time period it has to be invested yeah. so that they call it matures yeah. and then when it matures you can get your return, return. so yeah. those are the key words for for today and advice for viewers google in terms of people who are thinking of investing how should they go about it um like what Pritchett said, find out as much information as possible. If you need the help of an advisor, second opinion, it's always best to deal with a financial advisor if you need help. Mm -hmm. Don't leave it up to yourself and everything. You need someone who is qualified to help you. So let's find out more information before we take our money to some person who might just mm -hmm. disappear with it. Let's use the help of financial advisors who are actually accredited to do the work. Okay. Yes. So thank you, ladies, for joining us today on Money Talks. Thank you for empowering us, Google, with knowledge around investing. And hopefully, Pretty, you've got something to take out of this episode. So that's it for today on Money Talks. Until next time, keep investing, keep reading, keep learning. Goodbye. <laughs>